Hello everyone, and this is uh, G-Man from the MaxSymmetrical.com forums and from my forums, uh, BotClub.Ning.com. Um, I'm going to move pretty quickly through this first video because I made one earlier and it wasn't big enough for uh, upload. So, uh, first I just have to say I got most of this from NeuralMarketTrends.com from uh, Thomas' website. So, check them out and check out the Rapid Miner um, forums too because they got a lot of great information there. So. To jump right in, just a quick overview of Rapid Miner. Um, there, this starts with root, and it's basically a, an information flow. The first one under root is um, where you feed in your data, whether it be from a database or an Excel spreadsheet. So, um, the first most important part is, of course, where uh, to get the spreadsheet, an Excel file, and a sheet number uh, would be two. So we have two here, and uh, this holds uh, the output that we're trying to predict the trend in, and uh, it's called our label, and these are the values that we use to predict it with. Um, so uh, to put the label in, the label we put for column two, because we're trying to predict gold, what makes gold important as far as uh, what other things like currencies like the British pound, the Swiss franc, or the SP500, or the Canadian dollar, etc. Uh, what makes it important? What what describes it gives it value? So the, uh, you check this first and you put the label, column number, and for the ID you use, um, click that, and you put that for the column which is going to be your date. It's always going to be your date. Kind of like a primary key in a database. And uh, you have offsets, but we don't use those. There's like row offsets, or column offsets if you want to have white spaces out here. So um, come down. This is the genetic feature selector. Uh, Thomas Ott uses the genetic algorithm, but uh, I found this one to be, to get the same results, uh, to be easier to configure. You can try the genetic algorithm if you'd like to. And uh, it basically picks which are the, the fittest values. And um, in, in terms of rapid miner and the uh, the uh, output value of gold. So what we're going to do is uh, run this and basically it uses the K nearest neighbor analysis tool. Um, I'll let you look on uh, Wikipedia to kind of get a better definition of some of the stuff I'm talking about because really I got kind of above me too but I have a rudimentary knowledge of it so we'll just run this and it spits out what's important. So here we go. And I'm going to pause the video for a moment. Okay, so we're back now. And uh, it finished. And it always come to the metadata view first. And uh, tell you basically which ones it uh, picked in terms of importance for gold. So when, when I was using this, um, basically I just kept adding stuff I got from like Yahoo Finance. And just adding, adding British pounds with Frank. It's these are like currencies, of course, the SP 500, bonds, you know, normal basic stuff. Um, but uh, I, I would use this model to take those those features. We're doing a new model to predict the trend. So they're, they're two different things. Right now, we're just figuring out what's important to the output of gold. What the what what goes into per, to being correlated with gold. That's all we're doing right now. So, um, it said everything that we had in here is. So, I thought about that, like, that's not really a great example about how it genetically selects. And I realized, you know, I'm kind of good at this stuff by nature. And to me, it's just common sense that currencies and SP500 and bonds would kind of describe gold and, and would describe why people want to buy gold or sell gold. Um, if you, you don't really know much about that, I would research probably why. You know, do a little research on gold. Um, you know, it goes up in wars and things like that, as Aria said on the Max of Montreal forums. But um, what I did just to give you a uh, a description of how noise gets cut out is um, I added this column called random variable, and there's just and they're just random variables uh, created in Excel. So if this stuff works and it it's purpose to cut out noise and keep what's important in terms of gold 
then it shouldn't keep this one, even though it's kept everything else. So we started out with it keeping everything, which makes it look like it doesn't matter. So if it doesn't matter, it should keep this one. But if it's good at what it does, it'll cut it out. So what we'll do is um, let me resave this. And we'll come back here. And we'll start the process again. And I'll pause the video. Okay, so we're back now. And uh, the results came back uh, just as they did before. So it did not, it's, it cut this out, this random, these random variables because it has absolutely nothing to do with this, it's just random. So if it was, for example, if it was pork bellies, we're, we're trying to add, if these pork bellies had anything to do with gold, um, we would add it. And if it had nothing to do with it, it would cut it out. And if it described it like the brown describes gold or helps describe gold, then it would keep it. So it kind of ties back into what Nick said, which was pretty insightful. A lot of this is just art, and we just have to play with it and do trial and error. And that's why I wanted to get more people involved to create models and uh, share information. So um, this video was a lot longer earlier because I, I was setting goals and talking about what I wanted to do. So I'm just going to put a lot of that down on in writing. And this was just to give an example of how you determine what's important in terms of what you want to learn. So we want to learn the trend in gold. In the next video, um, we set the trends and then we learn the model based off those variables. But let's not get ahead of just kind of think about this. We're just learning about what's important in terms of gold or whatever we want to predict in terms of other variables. Okay? Have a great night.